Management Accounting 10B, Sales Forecasting and Inventory Turnover. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and the website, stltest.net. What I've done is taken a question that a uh, student gave me that we worked on together, and this does a nice job of connecting forecasting for budgeting and inventory turnover toward the end here. So here is some information that we're given. The question worded is turnover, but I'm going to use it as sales, that uh, the company sells 600,000 units, 2009, 1.2 million, 2010. We're given a sale price per unit, and we're given a cost of sale price per unit, cost per unit. And we're given for 2010 two dollar amounts, administrative expenses and marketing expenses, and these are in dollars. So the first step is let's compute an estimate of the units that were sold. Since we're given a sales amount, by the way, this is sales in dollars. Let's put that down. This is one of the big problems with setting up questions and a template is, is this in dollars or is this in units? This is in dollars. So we take, for example, 2010 sales of 1.2 million. I divide it by my sale price per unit of three and one divided by the other, I get 400,000 units sold. I can use the units sold and I can compute the cost of those units sold. Step two. So I take the 400,000 units sold from step one, see the link, multiply it by the 1.5 million, $1.5 per unit cost of sales, which is highlighted here. And if I multiply cost of sales per unit times units sold, I get cost of sales, 600,000. We don't necessarily use all the information, but we're given some inf we're given more data down here. We have capital spending that went on at the beginning of 2009. There was equipment in a warehouse with a value, a cost of 450,000. There was an opening inventory balance of $50,000. Both of these are at the beginning of 09. There's some additional investment plan of $100,000, and that was the plan at the beginning of 2010. And we find out that there's a tax uh, incentive that allows the business owner to depreciate 100% of that $100,000 investment in the year of purchase. So there's an accelerated depreciation to encourage businesses to buy assets, which you'll see in the tax code. We've got depreciation expense. Now, this is what was confusing in the problem because it was not made clear if that depreciation applies to the additional investment or to the assets that we had before the investment. I assumed for this student, and I had them put it in the problem, that the total included depreciation on the new assets as opposed to just the old assets. So it was old and new assets put together. We've got some interest expense on a loan, and we've got a tax rate of 25%. So question A says, how much net profit before any financing costs, which means we don't include the interest expense, is the venture this business expected to earn in 2010? So that's the question we answer here, and I put it in parentheses. Quote, before finance costing implies that interest expense is not used and is not part of our profit calculation. So we're given this is unit this is dollars. I'm going to put sales in dollars. So we've got sales in dollars 1.2 million. We've got cost of, and that was given. We've got cost of sales 600,000. I'm editing as we go here. We figured that cost of sales out in step two. We were given the admin, the marketing, and the depreciation expense. So if I take this revenue in blue less the expenses in green, I get a before tax profit of $170,000. i am told that my, pro my tax rate is 25%, so I'm multiplying 
the 170,000 multiplied by the tax rate of 25% in green there, and I get an after-tax profit, 170 less a tax, 42,500. I'm $127,500. That's my tax using those assumptions. If I go back up to the question, that profit before any finance costs, 2010. Then we change the what if, which is what we do when we budget. Well, what if sales were 1.5 million instead? Now here's where it gets a bit tricky. Because if I'm going to assume that sales are 1.5 million, and again, this is sales in dollars. I'm going to have to calculate a new number of units to be sold. So I take my sales in dollars of 1.5. I divide it by the same sale price per unit, and I get units sold of 500,000, assuming that the price per unit didn't change. And then once I get those 500,000 new units, I multiply each unit by 1.5, and I get a new cost of sales, 750,000. So those numbers are used to calculate a new cost of sales, and that's what I calculate in step four. Sales in dollars is given. My new cost of sales that I did in step four, did the calculation there. These expenses are given. I calculate revenue, blue, less expenses, green. I get a before-tax profit, 320000 I multiply the before-tax profit in blue by the tax rate in green to get my tax of 80000 if I subtract my before tax profit of 320 less my tax of 80 I get 240,000. One more uh, iteration of this. Well, what if sales were only 800,000? We go through the same calculations again. Uh, it's a little repetitive, so I won't do it other than to say that your unit sold will change. It's 800,000 divided by the $3 sale price. And once I get my unit sold, I can calculate a new cost of sales by multiplying units sold by 1.5 and I plug in the new 400,000 in the formula and off you go. What I wanted to wrap up this video with was inventory turnover which is question B down here which I think is good. It says if inventories are expected to turn over 10 times a year based on cost of sales what will be the venture's average inventories balance if sales are 1.2 million? Okay. So we get our basic inventory turnover formula, which is cost of goods sold or cost of sales divided by average inventory. So our cost of goods sold at 1.2 million in sales is 600,000. That's a known. My inventory turnover is known. It's 10, so that's a given. What I'm trying to solve for, the question I'm being asked is average inventory which is the denominator of the fraction, that's my x. So I do a little algebra and I say, I multiply both sides by x and I say 10x equals 600,000. I divide, divide both sides by 10. x is equal to 660,000, excuse me. That's my average inventory balance, 60,000. One last thing, what if I was gonna borrow to finance the inventory? What if the lender lend 50% of the average inventory balance because the inventory serves as collateral for a loan? Well, average inventory, 60,000 that I just figured out, times 50% means that I can borrow up to $30,000 on the $60,000 inventory balance. And if the borrowing rate was 12%, I could take the $30,000 amount I borrowed, multiply, multiply it by 12%, and the amount of, dollar amount of interest I'd be charged, assuming that none of the 30000 had been paid off yet, is 30000 times 12% or $3,600. And I made a, a note up here that this calculation is for annual interest before any principal pay down, so that's important to note. So... 
we did a couple of things in this problem. We go all the way back up to the top. We were given some sales in dollars and we calculated units sold and we used the units sold to calculate a cost of sales for a couple of different scenarios. We did it for 1.2 million in sales. Right there, we did it for 1.5 million in sales. Right there. We had to calculate new units sold, new cost of sales in dollars. And then finally, we used the inventory turnover formula. We plugged in cost of sales that we knew. We plugged in the inventory turnover rate that we knew and we solved to get our average inventory balance at the end. That's as far as we're gonna get on sales forecasting and inventory turnover. If you go to the website, stltest.net, you'll see down the left here, video links to hundreds of videos on accounting. Remember that our toughest accounting topics our small group live chats on these topics in blue, the topics that I'm most often asked about by tutoring students. We teach these on a continual basis, so if you have an interest, you'll be able to find that out. I wanna thank everybody for watching today. Uh, my audio clicked out for just a second. These are the live courses that we teach online. Periodically, we keep the group small to about 10 people, so you can go to the website page right here to find out more. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.